this is what you need to do if you want to double your deals. Check it out. Fam, what's up? We are back on the wholesaling business blueprint. I am glad to have you guys. And I want to talk to you about the one strategy that you can implement. It's a very, very simple um, uh, ad. It's almost like a bolt on to your current wholesaling business. If you're not currently doing it, you definitely should. Uh, but it has the, uh, the ability to help you double your business, all right? Um, to help you double the count of deals that you're doing on a monthly basis. Before I jump into all that stuff, I wanna ask you, if you're watching the videos that we put out there for you every single week, please do me a favor, subscribe, like, and share. Um, just hit the like button, uh, comment, let me know your thoughts and stuff that you wanna find out more about, things that you would like me to talk uh, more about on the videos, and let's get the conversation going. All right, now with that being said, um, this, uh, this strategy, right, often what happens as a, as wholesalers get into business, you know, they'll pursue the cold calling, you know, the, the sourcing of the deals and, and try to find motivated sellers, right? Uh, but a lot of times what happens is that uh, people become uh, this, this one trick pony. And at the current age, where we're at right now, the market is just competitive. It's competitive as hell everywhere. It doesn't matter what market you go to, there's gonna be wholesalers in there making offers, right? So how do you make sure that you have the, the most possibilities when it comes to locking a deal? Um, you got to stop being a one trick pony. That, that's that's going to be one of the fundamentals here. And there's different strategies that we can implement that help us, right? Get more deals done. The one I'm going to talk about uh, today is going to be your option offers, right? So option offers, what is an option offer? An option offer, it's a single one page agreement where you have the option to come in and buy the house. And I'll explain right now in a second how the whole thing just kind of you know gets pitched over to the seller. Um, but an option offer is a one page agreement, again, that allows you to market that property. It's not a full-fledged contract. You still have to come back and then assign a full-fledged contract if you find a buyer for it. But you can use an option offer when sellers are apprehensive. They don't necessarily want to budge on the price point. You feel like maybe you're locking it a little high. Uh, you're not sure if you're going to be able to sell that deal, but you still want to, you know, you, you want to have a shot at it. Um, a good option offer uh, can help you get it done, right? So what this does is it gives you vested interest in the property, not through a full contract, uh, but it's, uh, it's vested interest, right? So now you have the ability to market your option to your sellers. Do not market properties out there if you don't have vested interest in the property. If you're wholesaling, stay away from that kind of stuff. It gets really, really gray and, and borderline dangerous with departments of real estate throughout the country. And that's why they're cranking down on wholesaling. A lot of people are just marketing properties without having any, any vested interest in the property and it creates issues, creates problems, right? So if you're trying to get a deal done and they're not, uh, say that, um, you know, the property's worth $100,000, you're offering $70,000, they won't take it, they want 80. Uh, but the house is in a decent area, the condition is okay, you think you might be able to sell it, you're just not 100% sure, so you don't wanna fully commit to, to the $80,000 price and it might be a, a smaller spread, um, that's fine. You can pitch an option. And the way that you, you have a conversation about an option is, is um, you let them know, okay, an option is just the ability for you to see if one of your buyers wants to come in and buy the property. So we tell them straight out of the gate. I mean, we tell them we were fully, you know, completely uh, transparent with them. We let them know we are not gonna be buying this property. It's not for us. The price point is a little bit too high, but let me see if uh, one of the buyers in our network uh, wants to come in and buy it. You know, a lot of people do buy and hold and they just come in and, and, and they're looking for properties that you know, might fit the bill. So. If they do that, you let them know, and there's so many different ways that you can craft option agreements, right? So uh, our option agreement has a 15 day option in it. So we have the ability to market the property for 15 days, so otherwise it just cancels automatically. If we're not able to lock anybody down or get interest in the property, it will, it will just cancel. If they find somebody else during that period of time, um, that's fine. There's no, uh, they're not anchored, all right? So we, we make it a non-exclusive option offer. Not exclusive meaning that if they find a buyer, uh, that's fine. A lot of times it's what holds them back uh, from, uh, from you know, signing anything. Like, no, I don't want to be tied in for another two weeks, three, you know, three weeks or a month. So if that's happening, 
this is one good way uh, to get around it. Now what you gotta do though is move quick. You gotta make sure that you have your, your buyers on standby. You gotta make sure that your marketing is solid. You gotta make sure that you have the ability to reach them quick. So if you lock up an option agreement, uh, you can push that to your buyers and then add your fee on top, right? So if they want say $80,000, maybe you'll do an 85, thousand dollars so usually the spreads on option agreements are a lot thinner so you're not gonna you're not gonna have that eighty thousand dollar you know hit it out of the ballpark you know type of deal with this uh, type of agreement however it gives you an opportunity at um at moving that property it gives you an opportunity at pushing another deal through the pipeline and getting paid on it i mean a five thousand dollar ten thousand dollar assignment it's it's fine right uh, otherwise you would have lost it anyways so um, if you're not taking down the properties, if you're not, you know, actively flipping the properties yourself, this may be something that makes sense as a wholesaler. So it still gives you the opportunity to come in and then pitch the deal to, uh, to your buyer's list. And, um, it actually has a couple of benefits, right? That's one of them. It gives you the opportunity to just have an alternate closing. Number two, your cost per deal is also going to drop, right? This gives you more opportunities to get deals done. And, uh, and so you're going to have more deals to the same leads that you already have. Might as well monetize on them. So and number three, you're not leaving money on the table. This is another way to not leave money on the table, uh, especially when you're looking for deals, right? If you have, if you have, I don't know, if you're working on 30 deals a month, it, this may not even make sense because it's going to take some time and whatnot. The spreads are not, you know, $80,000. Um, but if you're like most wholesalers out there, uh, it, you know, a $5,000, $10,000 assignment fee is going to be okay, right? We get those deals all the time. That's, you know, that works. It pays the bills. It pays for marketing. At the very least, it's going to pay for the next campaign that you're going to launch and, and kill it. So to recap on this, when you negotiate an option agreement, uh, you're negotiating the option to buy the house, all right? So you let them know it may not close. Uh, I am not sure if I'm going to be able to move this for you. Give me 15 days of marketing. We'll see how that pans out um, and see if we get any interest at the price point that you're looking to get it for. All right. So you are literally negotiating the option to buy a house. So once that happens, you have first right of refusal. That's very important. you got to have first right of refusal in your option agreement. And again, what this does is it gives you vested interest. So now you have the ability to market your option to your list of buyers. So what happens next, right? Somebody bites, somebody says, hey, listen, I, I want that house. The spreads are not that big, but I'm looking for a buy and hold type of deal or it's in a great area. Now what you gotta do is go back to the seller and actually execute a full contract, okay? So the one page option agreement is not the purchase agreement. It's completely different. What you're doing with the option agreement is just kind of testing the waters, but it's a way to get around that, uh, uh, that marketing uh, without any vested interest that you don't wanna do, you definitely don't wanna do. So now what happens is that you go back to the seller and then you actually set up a uh, purchase contract. You, you uh, get it over to yourself and then you do an assignment to the buyer. All right, so you still have to go back through the original process, uh, but the option becomes that hook, right? That allows you uh, to, to market the property, see if the, you know, if the deal has any legs at all and saves you from committing too high to your property and not being able to uh, perform for the seller. So you don't want that because then it's gonna burn your reputation. So this is one of the, uh, one of the strategies that's gonna help you close a lot more deals in your business. We're gonna talk about additional strategies in upcoming videos. So again, if you like the content that you're uh, seeing on a weekly basis, make sure that you subscribe, like, and share. Catch us on the next one. Stay focused, you got this. Oh, <laughs>